Hello and welcome to the Dyson Leadership Podcast. I'm excited to bring you a, another great guest that's got a pretty awesome story. So I know I talk about it on the podcast. I'm a Maxwell Leadership Certified Coach, but I've got another coach from another group that's going to be sharing some of what they do with us. I have a Gallup Certified Coach and specifically working with Clifton Strength. So I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to let uh, Jeffrey share what he has for us today. So Jeffrey, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience, and we'll start explaining what uh, this means, that you're a Gallup coach, Clifton Strengths. We'll start diving into all of this today. Yeah, so I, my name is Jeffrey Bryant. Um, I am located in Missouri. I've been a Gallup certified coach for the past three years. I've been a part of uh, the Gallup world for now over a decade, just knowing what my strengths were, knowing what they look like. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's just the very small story of what that looks like. Um, but just professionally wise, um, I have worked with a few different clients, worked with some colleges, worked with um, uh, currently right now, work with a lot of foster kids. Uh, so I have a work for a nonprofit here in the state of Missouri, a statewide organization. And we just work with foster youth, helping them understand their strengths, what that looks like, how that works. Um, so basically, and you can find this on the Gallup website, so uh, not really taking any kind of intellectual aspect from them on this piece here, but basically what they say is talent times investment equals strength. So talent, the things that you're naturally gifted at, the things that you naturally do well, it could be anything. It could be someone who overanalyzes something. It could be someone who walks into a room that just takes charge or everyone, all the eyeballs lock in on that person. Um, it could be someone who just sits down in a group of people, and by the time that that's over with, all of those people feel very comfortable. They feel seen. They feel heard. Um, if you're if if you do great at any of those aspects, those are natural talents. And so then Gallup, what Gallup says, now you take that times investment. You start intentionally investing into that aspect. By the time you get finished with that, there's your strength. And so Gallup has 34 different strengths, and they rank them from one to 34. You're able to see your top 10. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You're able to see your top five at the very beginning. And then if you unlock all 34, you're able to see your top 10, see what that looks like. The funniest thing that I always love about strengths and I want to unlock all 34 for everybody is that a lot of times the people are very excited to see what their top 10 is, but everyone, everyone wants to go see what their bottom five is. It's like everybody's <laughs> after that bottom five. Like, what am I yep. not good at? <laughs> and usually you already know what you're not good at. So uh, like for me, my, my two bottom strengths are empathy and harmony. And so, uh, but for my wife and her, her, her top 10 is empathy and harmony. And so it's very interesting of how that, uh, you know, she jokes around about how I have no soul and that I just am just in debt for years and could care less about people. And that's not true. That's not true at all. Uh, I'm just very black and white. And my wife, uh, she's got a lot of gray in her. And so she likes to see just different sides of, of things and different sides of people. So, uh, but yeah, and in a nutshell, that's, that's, that's really what strengths is and how that I help people understand what that looks like. Yeah, and I know for me, just hearing you describe it, it's exactly the way I am. I typically want to see what's my top, what's my lowest, what am I good at, what am I not? And it it's funny you mention empathy because often that's one of the ones that I'm not that great with as far as a, a skill or a strength. Um, that's something that typically rates low. And for me, I'm curious if this one's high for you as well, but typically communication and communication ability scores really high for me, um, just in different strength. Assessments. Yeah, that's, that's always really what I see. Funny. And so here's here's what's here, here's what's really funny about this is so um I was a pastor for about 20 years. And so before coming before working for this nonprofit year, so I was a pastor for about 20 years. My main job was to communicate. Communication for me is almost towards the bottom. Which wow. is so hilarious that like communication is all the way down. I mean, so I want to say communication is like somewhere around 26, 27, somewhere around there. Um, now, my wife will say, absolutely, that's exactly where it belongs, if not number 34. Uh, <laughs> just because I, you know, I try to communicate, but I don't always say the right things at the right time. Uh, but 
So the best part about Gallup and the strengths aspect is even though you may have your, like, so may, maybe your job is very dependent upon a lot of um, strategic aspects or maybe a lot of just getting things finished, getting things done. But you may take your assessment and look at it and say, eh, that's not me. That doesn't look anything like me. The best part about it is you're able to take a lot of your different strengths that you have. So you take your top, top 10 and you can make through that top 10, you can almost make anything look like what, it, what, a, what communication would look like. So for me, even though communication is low, um, it, within my strength set that I use, I have belief, I have positivity, I have uh, woo, and um, self-assurance. And those are the four aspects, those are the four strengths that I use a lot when it comes to my communication aspect is just to be able to believe, like it's just a passion aspect of if I truly believe in something, one of my main goals is to make you believe it before I get finished. And so then that positivity aspect is just, you know, bring a lot of humor to what's going on. And so, um, you know, I will try and joke around a lot as much as I can. Um, sometimes my humor gets a little too dark at times. And so I have to know how to win. I have to reel it in when I need to just kind of let it go. It depends on who I'm talking to. Um, <clears throat> But then the self-assurance aspect of just knowing that um, I can do whatever set before me. If I feel like that I can get it done, I'm, that's, that's exactly what I'm going to get it done. And then obviously winning, winning others over is just pretty easy. Sometimes it takes a while. Some people are a little bit harder to crack than others. But, you know, it doesn't take much to kind of figure out, uh, you know, learn how to read a room pretty quick and know what you can get away with and what you can't get away with and the things that you can get away with that's what you go after and before too long next thing you know you're considered a decent communicator even though communication for me is almost in the basement so so there you go yeah that's that's very interesting so one thing comes to mind is i'm hearing us talk about strengths what you're you're good at or things that rank lower in this assessment I think back to one thing that John Maxwell talks about while he was a pastor and he shares that communication for him was one of his top. He was great at connecting with people, explaining information, teaching, all of those things were top skill sets for him. But ironically enough, counseling was one of his worst in interacting with people in a counseling setting. And he even had a, I believe it was a degree or a minor in his college education in pastoral counseling. And so it's interesting, even in that instance, we hear that where some people have to do certain things. They're not very good at it, but they make do. But in his instance, yeah. he recognized he should put more energy into what he's good at. And he found somebody else that was good at counseling and putting them in that spot. And I think that's one of the reasons we're talking about the Clifton strengths, mm -hmm. especially for teams. When you identify yeah. what their strengths, what their weaknesses are, you can then start to identify, OK, this person's good at these tasks. I need to trust them with this stuff and they're going to take it. They're going to run with it. They'll be fine. But if I have somebody else that struggles with those, I can give them something else that they are good at. And you optimize your team in that way for more efficiency, better performance, more cohesion. They're going to be happier because they're not doing things they're unhappy with. So I think there's yeah. some benefits. So Jeffrey, how about for uh, just a moment, how does the assessment for Clifton Strengths look like? Is this a a paper? You're answering questions. Is this an electronic? You're checking boxes. What what does the assessment actually look like? Yeah, that's a great question. When it comes to the assessment, everything is done online. Um, and so you've got roughly around thirty to forty five seconds to answer a question, and it usually it's just it's a multiple choice. Uh, I can't, it's been a while since I've taken it. I don't think there's any true and false. It's just more so multiple choice. Okay. And they just kind of want to know your gut reaction. So you read the question and they're simple questions. Sometimes some of the questions are just as easy as if you had the choice, who would you rather, who would you want to speak in front of? A large crowd, a medium sized crowd, a small crowd, no crowd. Very simple, very easy. I mean, so it's sure. not like a, you know, I think sometimes people hear, You've got just a few seconds to answer these questions and people go in panic mode because they're just like, oh my gosh, what if I can't? It's not that big of a deal. And so basically they're just wanting to know your gut reaction. They want to know what are you drawn to the most? 
Now, I will say, if you answer too many times on the neutral side, it will kick it out and let you know that you answered too neutrally, and you'll need to retake the assessment again. Um, and if, but if hey, if you got a listener that maybe they're they're like in panic mode because they're you know, maybe they're dyslexic or they have some kind of a disability that they just uh, they get kind of nervous in those aspects, um, you can reach out to Gallup and say, can you turn the timer off? And they'll turn the timer off for you. Like it's not, you know, it's not like a, this is this is one way we're doing it and it's worked this way forever. So we're not going to fix it. We're not going to change. Right. Um, you know, it's not that aspect. Uh, again, like I said, you know, work with foster kids. So there's been a few times that we've had to turn the timer off because we do have some some of our youth that, you know, they really high anxiety or just stress levels off the charts or they're like, I do horrible at tests. I get super stressed out. I can't do it. And again, with Gallup, you know, it's not a test. It's an assessment. And so that's one thing they drill over and over during, um, as you're being trained, like, don't call it a test. It's not a test. And so um, I think I've said a test twice in like <laughs> three years that I've been working because it's like right here. I feel like it's tattooed on my forehead that every time I jump on a call and I'm talking about, it's like, don't say test. <laughs> it's just right there. But yeah, so it's super simple. Um, you get the results instantly. So as soon as you hit submit, you get an email that kicks back to you, and then you get a full report that comes out, uh, depending on what you've taken. But you get a full report that pops out, shows you, here's the Gallup definition of what this word is, and underneath it is, here's how this works with you. Now, I will say at times, it's a little freaky, because it feels like you have Big Brother living in your house. Because it's a, you know, I've I've seen some, now I, this is, this is, um, I'm going to exaggerate because it's not been this way, but there has been sometimes I've read it. It's been like, here's the reason why you like uh, green Skittles and will only eat green Skittles on Tuesday afternoons. And people, they read it and they're like, oh my gosh, like how in the world did it know that I like green Skittles on Tuesday afternoons? You know, so again, that's like major exaggeration. But yeah, I mean, it, it just really does kind of go through. I've got one, one of mine, uh, I think it's said on there, one of my definite or what one of my explanations was like is not a morning person and i think it said it like 15 times in the paragraph is not a morning person don't do anything in the morning don't talk to in the morning don't communicate in the morning and i laughed because i was like oh my gosh this is this is me like this is me 100 <laughs> percent. i'm not uh that much of a morning person and so uh, but I'm not too much of a night owl either. So I'm really kind of in a weird spot <laughs> in life. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's it's a super simple process. Yeah, it uh, definitely sounds like it. And I, I know most assessments like that are generally online, fairly simple, straightforward. And it's funny, you even mentioned the people who maybe face anxiety or are a little more stressed out by a timer, because that's something even I run into Sometimes I'll, I'll work, be working with uh, the Maxwell uh, DISC assessment that we do, which is a communication style assessment that we'll interact with. And for that one, there are people who I've done a, a very simple version of it for youth, and they, they get anxious of, oh, I need to analyze this, look at this, answer these questions carefully. And it's always, I try to encourage them, just go with the gut reaction. When you read it, you look at it, what's your gut reaction? If there's one that really pulls you, that's the one you go with. And But then there's other people, just like you mentioned, that they can't get past that. And so you have to give them a little bit of flexibility. So even even in that, it's kind of ironic. We're talking about Clifton strengths, how different teams could collaborate, the way the skills and, and things. And you even see that from us as facilitators in our own respects. Mm -hmm in what we yeah. do, there are times we have to be able to adapt and work with people in different ways so that we can better serve them and help them, which is yeah. fascinating because it, it transcends any kind of coaching, any kind of work that you do. You have to interact with people slightly differently, which is very interesting. So mm -hmm. with that, I kind of want to segue because your your nonprofit, some of the work that you've been doing with the Clifton Strengths, with Gallup, I, I knew ahead of time a little bit, but not in much detail. And so as we were uh, discussing getting prepped, I learned a little bit more about your work with the foster care system. And that to me is very unique because there's a lot of people, you know, like myself, 
we go and we do uh, professional training, professional development. We go into organizations, businesses, churches. We deal with groups. I've, I will admit, I have never interacted with somebody that specifically said my niche market is foster care youth. That is completely unique. So, yeah. uh, Jeffrey, take a little bit of time and explain for us how you got started in that, but then also how you're using the Clifton strengths and yourself as a Gallup coach to help these youth navigate the stage of their life. Yeah. So like I said previously before, I was a pastor for about 20 years. So 16-ish of those 20 years, I was a youth pastor. And so I worked with pretty close to the demographic that I'm working with right now. Um, so I pastor a lot in rural areas of America. And in those areas, tons of at-risk, just at-risk population is, is just absurd in in some different areas of, of 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 America. And it's crazy to me, and this is like just this is my very small tangent I get up on every single time. That you can go to a rural town and one side of the town is it just looks like down home rural America. And you cross over to the next street and it looks like a third world. And it just it aggravated me a lot. That I just, I never could figure out why, why it was that way, why everybody, you know, either chose to live that way or just chose not to um, break the cycle, which I guess you could probably argue that's the same thing, just saying it differently. So anyway, fast forward to all that. Um, in 2018, I got a call from a buddy and he said, hey, would you like to move back to Springfield? And I said, no. And he said, no, I, for real, would you like to move back to Springfield? And I said, no. And, but <clears throat> my wife was like, hear him out. Let's go do it. You know, she wanted, she's from Springfield. So she wanted to come home. She's like, I want to come home. I want to see my mom. I want to see my brother. I want to see my sister-in-law, my friends, my family, all the stuff. I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. We'll go. And I came up here, interviewed, and just fell in love with the organization. And so uh, fast forward to where we are now program director been here six years um as of this recording here i've been here six years now as program director um and so we work with uh the at-risk youth population in the state of missouri 82 percent of the youth that we work with are in foster care or have had some type of ties to foster care so either they were in it exited out or they were in it and ran or there was some kind of an investigation early on, later on, in, earlier in life, nothing really panned out too much of it, but now they've kind of gotten in trouble with a juvenile, uh, in the juvenile justice system, or they're just not making it in school. They're here in uh, Missouri. We have, we have a class called Missouri Options. And that's basically, it's a, a class that helps youth, uh, helps students in high school graduate. And so it just really kind of, takes a lot of stress off of just the actual other pieces and just can really kind of helps them focuses more on them. And so maybe they're stuck there and they're, but it, even the Missouri options looks like they're not going to get out. Uh, you know, they're, uh, homeless, uh, the potential of being homeless. So, you know, at risk is a very broad paintbrush that people paint anything with. Uh, you know, right. it, can be at, it can be at risk of anything. Uh, but for us, so we work with 16 to 24 year olds. Like I said, primarily, most of them are in foster care. And what we do is we just take them to, you know, uh, it's it's a small part of what our, our curriculum is. But um, we take them through their curriculum. Um, through that, in that piece there, there is a chapter that is dedicated to Clifton Strengths. And um, it's not fully dedicated to it, but it just, it kind of opens up. The chapter opens up with Clifton Strengths, and then we begin to walk through the, an, an identity section with our youth, helping them to begin to understand who they are, the things that they're naturally gifted at, the things that they do naturally, um, the things that they do naturally, and how that they, um, the way that they see the world, the way that they see themselves, the way that they see the future, the way they see the present, the past, all those different things, and just helps them begin to strip away lots of lies and labels that have been placed upon them or that they have placed upon themselves. We, we put them through the assessment, top five strengths. So we give them 
five brand new words that they're able to attribute to who they are. And That's our great. coaches, I'm the only Gallup certified coach, and uh, but I do coach our coaches, um, our life coaches, on how to have conversations with their youth of when it comes to just knowing what strengths look like. And we do a lot of that whole uh, um, equation that I said at the very beginning: talent times invest, or talent times investment equals strength. And so I help our coaches understand what that investment piece looks like, and they begin to invest that into, the, into their youth and help their, and then have their youth. They start working through it. Then the next thing you know, within a few months, their outlook on life has changed. They're seeing wow. the world differently. They're seeing things differently. They they see themselves differently. They don't. They don't listen to the lies anymore that people try and put on them, which is very interesting because, you know, a lot of times we'll set in on some meetings and hear a lot of things, about, you know, people just like a lot of generalizations. And I think some of it is just the cultural generalizations of you're lazy, you're this, you're that, you don't get things done, you can't do stuff like this. And we kind of sit back and are going, man, they're hitting every single weekly meeting. Like they're fully engaged. They're texting me on days that they don't have to talk to me. So I don't really see any of what you're talking about here. I'm sure maybe it was there, maybe at one point, but that's not where we're at right now. And, um, you know, so uh, the organization I work for, it's called I Poor Life. So poor is P-O-U-R. So I Poor Life. And we just, we're here in, in Missouri. We're, we're working with our youth. Um, we just run in our year in numbers um, since 2000. Uh, let's see, since 2016, um, we have served almost 2,000 youth in the wow. state of Missouri. That's amazing. In any way, shape, or form, fashion. And um, some have gone all the way through the program. Some have been introduced to the program. And it, it was a little too much or they just weren't in a season of life of where they could fully dive into it. A lot of those youth that they were there, they came back. They've been back. They came back and said, hey, I screwed it up on the front end, and we start this thing all over. Absolutely. Let's go for it. You know, we're not just going to throw you away and say, ah, you only get one shot, kid, and you didn't do it right, so we'll move on to somebody else. That didn't, doesn't work that way. So we said, absolutely. Let's go for it. And so, yeah, yeah here we are. That is just amazing. Like, I, I'm truly, I love the story. I love what you, you're doing. I love hearing this work because it's so impactful. So I thought of a couple of things. I want to offer one bit of, of information for our podcast audience, and then also a personal story that really resonates for me in this instance. So for our podcast audience first, I want you to realize one of the things that Jeffrey's talking about is the impact of labels that these youth have labels or things that they've heard things that are on their mind that somebody's maybe said to them said in passing i think one of the most common we hear young people uh complain about or is if somebody gets mad at them and they say well you're just never going to amount to anything and a lot of young people sadly are told that and they yep. believe that and they struggle with that yep. and this is something that you don't have to be in this type of, of foster system or in a lower income community, this can face somebody at any point of your life. So Absolutely. here's here's my challenge for the podcast audience is if you ever have those types of doubts or you're struggling with labels or you feel like you don't have worth or have value, then you need to seek out something that gives you that positive reinforcement because maybe it's your family isn't very supportive, but you can go and find other people who will support you, help recognize your strengths, help encourage you and help push you. Maybe it's you don't have a community of friends and you get involved with a, a different group, a church group or an after school program, whatever it is, something that helps strengthen you and grow you and equip you for life. Those are vital. And one reason I, I say this, you know, I, I consider myself uh, privileged in this instance because I, I didn't have to grow up in those types of circumstances like the youth that you serve. And for me, I'm I'm thankful for that. But I remember, uh, I believe I was about 17, maybe 18 years old. I was in a youth organization and we were actually doing a leadership training. It was a workshop day. And I remember they asked us to sit down and 
pretty much all of these youth in there were probably middle class families. Some maybe were uh, a little bit more so towards poverty, but overall they they were fairly well off to be at this event. And they asked us to write down what are two or three things that you feel like people say about you and your generation. And I remember some of the most common things that were said in that room. And again, I remind you, this is a group of, of, of teenagers that volunteered and signed up to be in this leadership training because they wanted to make a difference. And they were writing down, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Uh, I'm ir- people say I'm irresponsible. People say I'm lazy. People say, and it, almost every single thing that was written down and said was negative. And I remember for me, that facilitator that day actually teared up and made the comment. She said, I feel like we as older generations have failed you if you guys feel this way, because you guys are the ones that want to make a difference. And we have failed you in making you feel safe or feeling like you can. And she gave us a challenge that day to go out and try to make a difference in our, our world. And I remember that was a key defining moment for me that I said at that point, if I ever get the chance to do leadership training or leadership facilitation, leadership coaching, you know, that's something I want to do at some point in my life. I want to be able to give back and help others the way that I saw these people helping and interacting with people. So for me, I see it as, as anytime you have an opportunity to be positive for other people, do it. Anytime you have an opportunity to add value, encouragement, help them recognize their strengths, do it. If you have an opportunity, if you're in need of it, seek out somebody like Jeffrey, his organization, his coaching, or somebody that can work with you and help recognize your strengths. And that that will make a huge impact in your life. So Jeffrey, I know we're getting a little bit closer to the end of our time, but um, I want to give you just a, a couple more minutes. As far as the outcomes and results that you're seeing, you ref- you reference that you've served somewhere a couple thousand youth there in Missouri. From you as a facilitator, a coach, helping run and lead this nonprofit doing this work, your perspective, what's maybe just one of the coolest things that you've been able to see, one of the most rewarding things that you've seen coming out of this? Uh and watching people I'm trying to figure out how I, want to, how I want to phrase this, watching people see that they're worth investing in has really been the coolest thing ever is whenever yeah. you have someone who just does not think highly of themselves. They do not feel that they are worth anything, that they're worthy of, of any, um, they're not worthy of uh, hand ups. They're only worthy of handouts. And whenever you see someone who the narrative changes and they begin to understand at that moment that they are worthy of investing in, and not only from others that's around them, but from themselves, hands down has been the coolest experience that I've I've ever seen. We've had some youth that come in that, you know, they they go through our, our curriculum, they go through our aspect, they go through our coaching. And they're not really into it. And because a lot of it is, you know, we're just, we are pushing our our youth to be better versions of who they are. Or being the actual version that they were meant to be from the very beginning. And sure. a lot of times, you know, you get through that, you get, you know, it's it's just, it, it's growth in general. Sometimes it's it's hard to go through because you see where you're at, you get aggravated at yourself and you know that you can do better and you know that you can do better. And sometimes you're just like, ah, this is frustrating. But whenever you've had, you know, youth that may have not had positive people in their life continue to push them along, it's hard for them to see that and then move past it. But sure. getting into the curriculum, they see it and they begin to understand this is who I, you know, this is what's going on. I don't like this. I don't like that. Uh, but they go through the assessment. And then they begin to understand and they see a lot of truths come out. Because like I said, you have that Gallup definition, but then you also have that definition that says, this is where it shines. This is what it looks like. Through, through your lens, through your point of view, this is what it looks like. And as they begin to read that and see it, everything shifts. Everything changes. And then at that point, all of a sudden, we've seen transformation just like that. I mean, almost completely overnight of where it's just 
here we go. And that's exactly what it's been. And so that's honestly, that's, that's been the coolest. That's been the coolest aspect is to see people's minds completely shift from a, I don't know, to a, no, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. These are the dreams I have. And these are the dreams I'm going to fulfill. Absolutely. That's, that's amazing. And I'm sure you probably have so many stories and examples that you think of, you, you reminisce on and, I know those those wins, those great stories, those successes, those are what pushes you to keep going and keep doing this work. Yeah. And I know that because, you know, for me in the training that I do, it's seeing people realize, oh, hey, I'm a leader. I can have impact on people. And that's something for me. And when I see people kind of have that aha moment for me of, oh, I do have influence. I do have this yep. impact on people around me that's that's important for me and i want to keep yeah. doing what i'm doing yeah. so uh jeffrey um kind of as we're wrapping up if somebody wants to find out more about your organization or uh connect with you uh is there a website anything that you would want to share as far as a way maybe they could donate support in, anything yeah. at all absolutely yeah if you want to know more about the nonprofit uh here in missouri it's ipoorlife.org so it's the letter i Poor is P O U R. Life is L I F E. So ipoorlife.org. You can see what we're doing here, the work that we're doing here, what's going on. Uh, obviously, we are a nonprofit, so any anything that you give uh, is tax deductible. So that's could be a positive um, <laughs> for any of your listeners. Um, sure. Yeah, you can come take a look at that, see what that looks like. Um, if you're interested in Gallup coaching itself. Um, then you can reach out to me. Um, you can shoot me an email. Uh, it's Jeff, J E F F, at clearpathcoaching.co. So don't throw the M on there because it will not come to me. <laughs> so clearpath at clearpathcoaching.co. Um, if you're interested in Gallup and what that looks like, I'm more than happy to sit down, walk you through it, give you a few minutes to kind of understand what it looks like see if it's a fit for you and we'll go from there absolutely and for the podcast audience the website link and also um email i will put those in the description so you can just go check out the description both of those will be listed there for you so jeffrey couple uh wrap-up questions i gave you a heads up these were coming at you so you've had a little bit of time to think about them so uh start off with a book do you have a book that you've read that's really impacted you, marked your life, something you would recommend for our audience that's maybe leadership, professional development, something like that you would offer? Yeah, I've got two, or my go-to. I know you said one, but I do have two. So That's perfectly fine. Atomic Habits. If you are great in a book. position to where you are not a great self-starter, it takes you a while to get going. Atomic Habits is the book for you because it slowly helps you build the habits to where you want to get. And secondly, a book called Boundaries. If you're a person who have a hard time saying no, if you're a person that just has a hard time, um, you just keep piling your plate fuller and fuller and fuller. And I know fuller is not a word, but I am, that's the word I'm using right now. If you just continue to pile your plate full, boundaries will help you, uh, help you begin to understand what it looks like, how to say no to things, how to put yourself first and kind of keep yourself mentally in a position to where you can stay stable every single day. So yeah, those, those are my two favorite books. Um, completely changed the way I see life. So two great books. Absolutely. I'm familiar with both of those. And for the podcast audience, those will also be listed in the description. So if you haven't read either of those, I highly recommend it as well. Absolutely. So check out the description links for those will be down there. Jeffrey, final question for you in wrapping up. If you have just one point of advice that you could offer to maybe a young professional, a young leader, somebody who's maybe starting something for the first time in any of those circumstances, what's one key bit of advice you've learned in your life that you would pass on to them? Mm, You're worth investing in. You are worth investing in yourself. And so don't let anyone tell you that you're not, or don't believe the lie that you're not. Don't, don't create the narrative that, that you are not worth investing in. And so whatever that looks like, if you have the money to hire a coach, hire a coach. If you don't have the money to hire a coach in this moment right now, 
grab some podcasts and some TED Talks that will put you on the right path to get you where you want to go because you Absolutely. are worth the investment. Absolutely. That is great advice. And I know for me, I've been in that situation where I didn't have the money to hire a coach or seek external help. So if it wasn't yeah. something sponsored by an employer or paid yeah. for in some way, books, podcasts, anything that I could find add value to myself, it's, yeah. it's definitely beneficial. So I completely agree. Jeffrey, I, I want to say thank you for jumping on for a podcast episode. I've enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, I've enjoyed you. learning more about your organization, what you're doing. I know you guys are doing fantastic work. So I, I'm glad you reached out and wanted to do an episode. So oh. I'm, I'm glad we were able to make this happen. Absolutely. Well, thanks for the invitation. I appreciate it, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. So podcast audience, be sure to leave a rating, leave a review. If you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to share it. If you know somebody out in Missouri that can connect with Jeff or you have something else, maybe somebody that can support their mission or somebody that does similar work, send this podcast to them. Share Jeff's message with them and let them see Jeff's mission, Jeff's work and what he's doing. And be sure to subscribe. Look for another episode every single week of the Dyson Leadership Podcast. And I look forward to having you join us and join this community as we grow in our leadership together. Thank mm -hmm. you.